what you just saw was a fine example of domestication. For ages, human beings have been domesticated resources around us for our benefits. Whether it was taming of animals in the agriculture revolution, or more recently use of machines in the industrial revolution, and then bringing computers into our lives in the silicon revolution. The human speech has played a major role in this domestication journey. Let's take the taming of animals, for example. A dog, irrespective of any part of the world that uh, it may be getting domesticated in, knows how to respond to its master's voice commands. Now, remember that the dog may not understand the language or the dialect of its master, but in the journey of getting domesticated, the dog has learned to appreciate uh, the human behavior, the intent, and the emotion. Today, we are surrounded by technology. And it's important that we think about domesticating technology now. A true measure of domestication is not only when technology is made available, but truly usable and accessible to everybody, irrespective of their social status, economic status, or even literacy. And so imagine a world where you and I can speak to machines around us in the way we speak to each other. Imagine how easy our lives would become. Imagine how easy business processes would become. And imagine the empowerment that the technologically challenged would start to face. Now, we are beginning to see some of this around us already, with the advent of virtual assistants on our mobile devices and the home speakers. They have certainly made it easier for us to start to communicate with our phone or home TVs. But the fact is that the human voice communication is a very complex form of communication. Probably far more context as compared to the other forms of communication, example, text, email, or chat. And so let me bring this complexity to life for a bit. First, over years, we've evolved our understanding of language and the way we speak it. Candidly, the use of some words has also changed. Today, if somebody knows English and Hindi, it's common practice to form a sentence in Hinglish, which is using English and Hindi words interchangeably in the same stanza. And if the listener is conversant with both the languages, it's very easy for the human mind to pick up the intent in the sentence. But this is not a trivial problem for a machine to solve, to predict when the speaker is going to move from English to Hindi and that back to English. Second, the world has over 6,000 languages. Yes, let me repeat, over 6,000 languages and multiple thousand dialects. And so when you add that, this becomes a hard problem. Add to it pronunciation, intonations, grammar, punctuation, emotions and intent. And just this becomes an incredibly hard problem to solve. Emotion is a key part of the human speech. Today, when I'm speaking, I can pause. I can lay stress on a certain word. And using my voice tonality, I can convey excitement or I can convey displeasure. Right? And it's so complex that sometimes we, we uh, don't understand each other. We, we misinterpret our intentions, let, let alone machines trying to interpret our intentions. And so to bring this complexity to a real life example where you can participate with me, let's take this example. If I were to send you a text message with a question of, are you happy now? There is only one way to interpret this question, and your response would be your state of happiness to me. But if I were to verbally ask you this question, I can ask it in four or more ways, and actually with four different meanings. Let me try that. Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Are you happy now? And as you see, by laying stress on four different words, the meaning of this question is slightly changing itself. And this is the power of human speech. It was with this kind of a problem that got me started 10 years ago on my journey. Now, I didn't start with a technological answer to this. I actually started trying to solve a real problem. The problem that I wanted to solve was 70% of the Indian population was going to be disconnected to the so-called digital revolution. And this wasn't just going to be because of lack of connectivity, but basically lack of literacy, and specifically English literacy. And that led to the creation of a technological venture called Genifor, which focuses on easing man-machine communication 
by getting speech recognition and artificial intelligence to understand <coughs> multiple human languages and dialects. My team and I, over these years, uh, have, have seen the development of this technology by us and by others around us in the area. And we've been very thoughtful of coming up with a vision of the future of voice. To try to come up with ways in which this technology would impact your lives and mine, far beyond making it easier to use our phones today or to talk to our TVs. And so having developed this for over a decade and having put this out in over uh, 4 million users' hands, we are convinced that the technology would impact us in broadly three areas. The first, essentially automating tasks that us human beings can already do. There are so many things that today as humans we can achieve, but they can be made faster or easier with the technology. This is Selvi, and she lives in rural Tamil Nadu. If she wishes to transfer 500 rupees to her sister's bank account today, she has two options. She could walk up to the nearest bank branch, which, mind you, could be 12 to 14 miles away from her house. Or she could use the phone banking of the bank and call the number, but that itself might not be easy because her language or dialect may not be supported. And she may not be as conversant to use the IVR system as you and I are. And so today she has another option. She could have the mobile banking app on her phone and she could speak to the app in her language, in her dialect, and instruct the app to transfer the money to her sister's account. The transaction is instantaneous and a confirmation is spoken back to her in her language again. This is an example of technology and speech recognition technology automating a human task and empowering a human being. Second, an area where technology would reduce human errors in critical tasks. As human beings, we are involved in lots of activities which are prone to human error, and some of these could be mission critical. This is Donna, and she lives in Boston, Massachusetts. Last year, she had her bank account hacked, where the imposter was able to call the phone banking of the bank, reproduce her social security number, date of births, and history of last transactions, and then get through the IVR to transfer $5,000 out of her account. Now, for a middle-income woman living in North America, this is like losing a fortune. Imagine if Donna's bank account was protected by her voice. What if her voice was the password, which can't be stolen or copied? And so unless Donna, in her own voice, was going to say, my voice is my password, nobody should be able to access her bank account. Now, some of you may be thinking about mimics at this time, right? And this is where voice biometrics comes in. Voice biometrics as a technology, very similar to other forms of biometrics, such like fingerprint, creates something called a voice print which is a combination of 100 parameters of the human voice, which include behavioral and physiological parameters. And therefore, it is able to determine the identity of the person on the other side of the call, including distinguishing between mimics and the real person. And so this is an example of speech recognition, voice biometrics, and artificial intelligence coming together to eradicate human error in as critical a task as financial transactions. The third area of impact is actually help us achieve things which, as humans, we couldn't have achieved before. These may be because of mental limitations or physical limitations. All of us who have spoken to call centers in any part of the world know that our call will be recorded for quality and training purposes, right? So every single day, hundreds and thousands of these calls are recorded and stored in servers. And given the size of this data, it is physically impossible for human beings to listen to all of these calls and audit them. But today, with speech recognition and artificial intelligence, computers can listen to these calls, all of them, with as much efficiency, potentially in real time, and analyze them. This is Shela, who lives in Vietnam, and this gentleman is Ruben, who lives in Malaysia. They both are customers of the same bank in Asia, and they both have borrowed some money from the bank. As may have happened, this month they are both a couple of days behind in the loan repayments. And as process, the bank calls out through the call center to both of them to remind them that they are behind their schedule. And if they don't repay in a couple of days, 
their credit score might get affected. Shella responds by saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I was actually traveling, I didn't notice, and I'm certainly going to make this payment in the next two to three days. Ruben's response is very similar, and he says, yes, yes, I know, and I will repay you guys this week. Today, it's possible with artificial intelligence to train computers on hundreds of human emotions and link them to intent. And what that means is, now the speech analytic system, which could have been listening in the background to this call from the call center, would predict that given the way Shela answered the question and her history of transactions with the bank, she has a more than 80% probability of actually doing the repayment. Even if she takes more than three days, the bank need not call her again. Whereas Ruben, who said he's going to repay within a week, has less than 50% chance of keeping true to his word. The way he conveyed the emotion and his history of transactions with the bank lead the bank to believe that he should be reminded perhaps more times. This is an example of speech analytics and artificial intelligence coming together and conveying the intent of the customer to the bank like they've never known before. And so it's clear to, to me that speech recognition and artificial intelligence is going to impact and change our lives in a variety of ways. Whether it's about automating certain tasks that we already do, or in reducing errors in some critical tasks for us, or helping us achieve things that we've never tried to achieve before. What's interesting is that such deep technological innovations were in the past given to us as Christmas gifts from the rest of the world like the Silicon Valley and Japan, etc. But today we Indians are being the Santa of such technology to the rest of the world. Thank you. Our voice is the key for us to engage with the world. And so whether it's for Selvi, who wants, who is perhaps fighting poverty and illiteracy in a village in Tamil Nadu, or whether it's for Donna in North America, and all she cares about is for her savings to be secure in her bank, or it's Shella, who's an honest borrower, and all she expects is decent customer service and dignity. For all of them and you and I, speech recognition and my innovation is going to give a power to our voice and also help us domesticate technology by our own voice. Thank you. <laughs>